little lengthy one at that 18 year old brought with consumption of paracetamol tablets on arrival patient is conscious and oriented okay so at least there is no encephalopathy here he said he consumed paracetamol tablets 500 of 500 milligrams seven in number two hours ago right all this information is important for us he has taken 500 milligrams paracetamol tablets seven in number so 500 into seven that becomes three and half grams right three and half grams and he has taken it two hours ago right so when we talk about paracetamol le lethal dose it is usually for single consumption it is more than or equal to 10 grams that can be considered as lethal dose right okay so he has definitely not taken a lethal dose of paracetamol okay and he has consumed it almost two hours back which of the following steps are not necessary in managing this case secure two large bore iv cannulas draw blood for serum paracetamol levels start iv fluids start n-acetyl cysteine and refer for liver transplantation so based on these five actions right the answers here are basically combinations of these actions so pick up which actions are not necessary for this patient right you have a patient 18 year old in your emergency room who has consumed 3.5 grams of paracetamol two hours back conscious wise he is conscious and oriented so right right now there is no hepatic encephalopathy as such we know that the paracetamol will not immediately cause hepatic encephalopathy right it's going to take time hemodynamically they have not described whether he's stable or unstable but because they have not mentioned hypotension let us assume that he is stable now what are the steps that you would be taking in the emergency room would you secure a large bore two large bore iv cannula right so in any case of poisoning and any patient who comes to emergency room with unstable hemodynamics right ideal way is to have two secure iv cannulas preferably large bore so that in case there is a need for rapid fluid administration that is possible so i'm not against the statement a right to me that's a true statement sensible choice okay now the one thing that we can probably confidently rule out at this point of time is refer, refer the patient for liver transplantation right? i think all of you agree with that right so i for me this is a false statement or i don't need to take this action i don't need to refer this patient for liver transplantation as of now okay then i'm left with start iv fluids well probably you would be doing a stomach wash two hours ideal stomach wash time is when patients present within one hour there is always a controversy behind the stomach wash whether you administer or not maybe you may also be keeping the patient nil per oral so you need to take care of the patient's hydration so starting iv fluids not a bad choice right so i would definitely do that so i have to now make a choice or i have to decide whether i would do the step number b and step number d whether I would draw the blood for serum paracetamol levels and whether I would start n style cysteine. Right. So you're all familiar based on what parameter we decide n style cysteine initiation. Right. What is the parameter? Serum paracetamol level. Right. So we don't treat all patients of paracetamol poisoning with n style cysteine. We agree that. Right. So it is based on the rheumatic matthew nomogram. Right. So let me take you through the rheumatic matthew nomogram. So this is how the rheumatic matthew nomogram looks like where basically time since consumption and the acetamol, acetaminophen or paracetamol plasma levels are plotted against each other, right? So on X axis you have time after consumption of paracetamol and on your Y axis you have the serum paracetamol level. Okay, so this patient has presented two hours after consumption of paracetamol, right? Agree on, on this? Let me take you back to the question, right? Two hours after consumption of paracetamol. So now let us plot, if at all we want to do the serum paracetamol levels, where do we spot here? Now, what is the standard approach to the treatment of paracetamol poisoning? You get the serum paracetamol levels, you plot it on the rumac matthew nomogram based on the time after collection, time of the collection of sample after consumption and the serum paracetamol level. If that level is falling above so-called what we call as treatment line, right? We have this thing called as treatment line and we have one line called as toxicity line right so toxicity line basically indicates that any paracetamol value which falls above this toxicity line is toxic and any paracetamol value that falls below this is probably non-toxic unlikely to cause acute liver failure right but to account for possible errors in estimation and collection of samples and dilution 
we keep the treatment line little lower right so we keep the threshold little lower so that that lowerness is by 25% right so 25% lower the the toxicity value for that particular time right that is what is called as treatment line it is set 25% lower than the toxicity line so anything above the treatment line should be treated right? the pink area that you are seeing this pink area is below the toxic line but above the treatment line so above the treatment line right we will be treating if paracetamol values fall anywhere above the treatment line we will be treating that with n style cysteine right okay now one thing you will see here is the line is missing for four hours right so it starts after four hours of consumption not before that the reason for that is when you consume paracetamol in the therapeutic doses right the peak is usually reached by around two hours when you have consumed paracetamol in therapeutic doses like you take a dollar 650 or one gram of uh, oral paracetamol your peak is reached around two hours right that's that's what we also personally experience right when we are going through headache one and a half two hours after we have consumed the paracetamol tablet we notice the improvement because the peak effect appears by then but when we give someone at the toxic dose right toxic dose generally is defined as four grams so when you give someone a toxic dose when the paracetamol is going to peak obviously absorption is also impacted when you give a larger dose because the absorptive mechanism is saturated so the peak is seen at around four hours right and the peak plasma paracetamol values are the major determinant of the hepatotoxicity because when it is at at peak right the amount of napqi generated will also eventually peak and at that point of time the glutathione supply may not be adequate to convert all that napqi into non toxic uh, metabolites so liver injury ensues right so because of that any paracetamol values done before 4 hours is not predictive of the liver injury right so that is why we don't do it before 4 hours of the time from consumption so only 4 hours after the consumption we can do the first paracetamol sample a patient let me say patient presents with a uh, patient presents with paracetamol poisoning 6 hours after consumption immediately you can draw the paracetamol levels because here you can plot 6 hours you can plot you can plot let me say the paras patient's paracetamol levels are 100 and he is presented six hours after consumption right six hours his paracetamol levels are 100 right so it falls below the treatment line i probably don't need to treat the patient with n style system i can just extend the support you here another situation patient is presented eight hours after consumption and let me say patient's paracetamol levels are 300 right so 300 will fall somewhere here eight hours after consumption so it is definitely above the treatment line i would end up treating the patient with n style system right so the earliest we can interpret is four hours after presentation now that begs the question what do you do if patient has presented within four hours of consumption you do all the necessary basic steps right if stomach wash you want to give if he has presented within one hour do it secure iv cannula stabilize the patient administer the iv fluids do the investigations of other organ functions do LFT baseline, do the creatinine levels that might be reflective of baseline creatinine. But you might have to wait for wait for the sufficient time till four hours have elapsed since patient has consumed paracetamol, and at that point of time you can draw the paracetamol levels. Right? Okay. Now that I think addresses one of the options. There is one more option that we need to address. Start an style system from the beginning. Right. So under what circumstances? Without looking at the rumac matthew nomogram, we can start N-style cysteine. Okay, so this can be another important MCQ. So N-style cysteine, I shouldn't say just, we can, should be started without relying on rumac matthew nomogram. Without relying on rumac matthew nomogram under certain circumstances. Okay, so I'm just giving you the quick summary of the parameters. Number one, if patient has consumed lethal dose of paracetamol right lethal dose consumption that is 10 grams for an adult i don't know about pediatrics for an adult it is 10 grams so if patient has taken in a single go 10 grams of paracetamol or two strips of 500 milligrams of paracetamol we should administer n style system don't even waste time in getting the uh, serum paracetamol levels in immediately start on n style system okay second circumstance this rumac matthew nomogram predicts the hepatotoxicity of the particular paracetamol level 
in a normal individual with a healthy liver right so those who already have a compromised liver probably lower dose may be toxic so again the nomogram is not applicable right so in pre existing liver diseases it is not applicable so you have a cld or an ald presenting with paracetamol consumption start in a style 16 don't look into the serum paracetamol levels okay third circumstance when more than 1000 start immediately because already you have evidence of liver injury whether it is caused by paracetamol or something else we don't know but there is evidence of liver in injury this added paracetamol can still worsen the situation start an agile system okay then fourth circumstance so this nomogram i did give you the pkpd principle of this right so usually the paracetamol level peaks after two hours when we give the therapeutic dose peaks at around four hours after you give a toxic dose right but this peak effect is for single consumption if there are multiple consumptions of paracetamol which is spaced out in time obviously this is not applicable right so if you take some four five tablets in the morning another five six tablets uh, by noon another six seven tablets by evening another set of tablets in the night then there will be multiple peaks right so this nomogram is unable to predict the toxicity of such consumption so in that case again you need to administer NSL system without looking at the paracetamol levels right so multiple consumptions spread out in time multiple consumptions spread out in time you are not going to give you are not going to give you are not going to give the patient sample for the paracetamol levels you are directly going to administer NS type system right so these are the important parameters i want you to remember where you can bypass the rheumatic matthew nomogram okay so let us go back to the question now and let us see what makes the sense to us okay now draw bloods for serum paracetamol level no this action is not required at this point of time or you don't need to do this at this point of time that is because the patient has presented within four hours of consumption of paracetamol so the next ideal time is wait for two more hours and then draw the blood sample for paracetamol level so meanwhile what can we do has the patient consumed lethal dose of paracetamol no it is three and a half grams right if you had consumed lethal dose then i would have administered anesthetic system without waiting for the paracetamol levels he has not consumed right it is toxic dose or subtoxic dose not lethal dose so i don't need to do an nsl system administration right so neither my statement d is true it's also a false statement i don't need to start iv nsl system neither i need to draw the blood paracetamol levels right now so that's also false right so question was asking which of the following steps are not necessary in managing this case so b d and e right these are the unnecessary steps so among the answers given which one is correct one right so option b is the correct one right 